Washington correspondent for The New York Times, Michael Schmidt, is out next week with the paperback edition of his book, Donald Trump versus the United States. And among the new material featured in it is a 13,000 word profile of former President Donald Trump's longest serving chief of staff, John Kelly. Remember him? The profile brings to light several details, including Kelly's role behind Trump's pivot from trying to provoke North Korean leader Kim Jong-un to befriending him. It reads in part this, Kelly told the president that engaging with Kim could prove once and for all that he was the greatest salesman in the world. In one-on-one -on -one conversations, Kelly tried to gently nudge Trump away from his incendiary language toward North Korea, telling him that he could unintentionally set off a conflict if his language was misread. You're pushing him to prove he's a man, Kelly said to Trump. If you push him into a corner, he may strike out. You don't want to box him in. Let's bring in Michael Schmidt right now. Michael, there, there, there are wow. so many revelations here. Uh, one has to do with the fact how shocked uh, General Kelly was at just how ignorant Donald Trump was of the basics of foreign policy. And they often try to explain to people that what people consider to be maniacal by Donald Trump is just sheer ignorance at times. In the early days of Kelly's tenure as chief of staff, Trump showed he had no grasp on the basics of American foreign policy. Quote, why did we go to war in North Korea? Kelly then explained the basics of the Korean War to the president. Why the blank are we in NATO, he would ask Kelly. Mm -hmm. Kelly, since Trump's question didn't have to do with philosophical arguments, he just didn't understand it. Kelly explained, sir, it came as a result of World War II. Also something that kicked up a lot of dust. Uh, the Atlantic wrote an article about Donald Trump calling people uh, losers who had gotten killed in a war. And yeah. a lot of people were accusatory, saying, oh, they, they just made that quote up. You reveal here, it actually was, it actually was General Kelly. Uh, why the blank do we think they're heroes, uh, soldiers who are injured or died in war? They're getting too much praise. They're losers, Donald Trump said. Um, that, of course, was it not, Michael, one of the things that and his hatred for John McCain, one of the things that uh, ended their relationship. Yeah, let's deal with the, the most important part of the this this 12,000 word thing that I've put on the paperback of my book and we'll get to it. And that is that in the in the piece, I write that Kelly kept, had to keep an eye on Morning Joe because despite what Donald Trump was saying publicly, Donald Trump was watching Morning Joe and watching what you were saying about him and uh, would come down from the residence around 11 o'clock in the morning and complain about what he heard on Morning Joe. So despite yeah. claiming not to watch it, he was watching it. Yeah, um, I, I, uh, the by, by, by the way, we, we, we heard that from a lot of staff members. Uh, and by the way, hi, Donald. Yeah, uh, he's, st he's still stop. watching. Uh, we begged him to stop watching. Leave but, us but, alone. But he wouldn't do it. But again, let, let's talk about, though, uh, this, this, this reveal of Donald Trump that many people have known about. But he just, John Kelly just... He learned that Donald Trump just didn't know a lot about foreign policy. So when Kelly came in as chief of staff, he thought that the problem around Trump was that he was not staffed properly and that they needed to create a process around him. And that's what the chaos of the first six months of the administration was about. But when Kelly comes in as chief of staff, what he realizes is that the problem is not just the fact that there's not a process and, and that he's not being staffed as well as he could, but that Trump himself was the problem, that Trump was far dumber and immoral and ignorant and and lazy than he ever thought he was. And within a few days, he becomes terrified because here he is, the top staffer to the president of the United States, and he's realizing that the president of the United States is far more uh, limited and potentially dangerous than he ever thought. And at that point, there was no one else to call. He was he w it was just him and Trump. And he basically spends the next 18 months trying to manage Trump as much as he could. 
and no issue for Kelly sort of uh, typified the shortcomings of Trump and the, the potential dangers that he presented than North Korea. Yeah, and, and let's talk about a, a, another uh, aspect of it that was shocking to John Kelly, uh, how shallow Donald Trump was when he would select people. I remember during the transition talking to him and him talking about how Rex Tillerson was big and he looked like the role. He loved Mattis because of Mattis's nickname, Mad Dog. His name's Mad Dog. I love it. I'm going to get this guy. He didn't like Petraeus because he thought Petraeus w worked out too much. He was too drawn in. He weighed the same in high school that he weighed uh, when Trump was talking to him. And no secretary mm. of state could be that drawn. I'm, I'm serious. It's, no, I this watched is, this conversation the, 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 in the, awe. This is shocking. And, he and was obsessed with how he, much he worked out and thought that somehow it didn't look manly enough, like you need to not care so much. Right, and, and, and so all of this leads up, of course, to a conversation, and this is, the general talked about all of this with you, but it led up to a conversation about Nikki Haley, oh. why he didn't want mm -hmm. Nikki Haley to be a secretary of state or vice president. What Trump said, so Trump is throwing around different possibilities for replacements of uh, Tillerson and, at, and Pence, even as far back as uh, 2018, talking about whether he could replace Pence. And in discussing that, he says, well, what do you, you know, what, what do you think about Nikki Haley, he throws out in the Oval Office. And um, what Trump says is that she doesn't look good for me, and he complains about her blotchy complexion and saying that, you know, because of her aesthetics, he didn't like her as a potential, uh, you know, senior administration official or as a potential vice presidential replacement for Pence, who Trump was complaining as far back as then owed him, that Pence owed him because Trump had saved Pence from political ruin when he picked him in 2016 to be his vice president. Yeah, I mean, Willie, obviously. Uh, shocking and yet not surprising at all. I mean, the only question this I This from a man. I, I, I was going to say, I was just going to ask, do they not have mirrors in Mar-a-Lago? <laughs> I think they have mostly mirrors in Mar-a-Lago based on the decor I've seen from some of the photographs. Yeah. The quote uh, he said, Donald Trump, according to General Kelly, is of, of Nikki Haley, she has that skin thing. She doesn't look good for what? me. What? Didn't That's like her, crazy. Her, her complexion, he said. There was something wrong. I don't know what he's talking about there. Um, I don't bigger, either. Bigger picture, Mike. What? He was Damn. among, General Kelly, like Mattis and others, among those who said privately and then publicly later, I stayed in because the alternative was catastrophic for the country. If I leave, Rudy Giuliani comes in. If I leave, Person X comes in, and there are no guardrails left. Um, how did he now, with some distance from it, and he was in the room with Donald Trump while all this was happening, trying to keep things on the rails. How did he talk about his time in there and how long he decided to stay and when he decided to leave? So one of the things about Kelly is that he has not really spoken publicly and he won't he really won't talk publicly. He I did an interview with him that ran in The New York Times uh, about a month ago about him talking about Trump trying to weaponize the IRS, but he will not talk publicly about Trump because, uh, or not much about Trump, because he sees his role as like a general who believes the divide between the, the military and politics is essential. Now, this frustrates a lot of people. And, and it, you know, people have often wanted Kelly to speak out publicly more than he has, but I think he's extremely conflicted by the fact that um, that that he is a four-star Marine general and that that divide between politics and, and who he is is important.